Now that's what I call starting an episode with a blast. My name is Robin and welcome to my Minecraft world. We're starting off in the nether because I'm in search of ancient debris, but so far no luck. I've brought along one stack of TNT when that runs out I'll return to the overworld. One full stack of TNT gone. I already went once before and returned with seven ancient debris. This time I got nothing. I guess I'll put a stick in to mark the happy occasion. My aim is to get a full stack of ancient debris, but we are a long way off. I did get some other resources though, so let's put those away. The resources being netherrack, uh, the soil blocks, so I'm making a little bit of progress on the notice board. Oh yeah, while we're here, uh, the beacon is gone as you can see, relocated to the bottom of the world. I uh, had to put in a bit of a barrier up here because I already fell down once, luckily without dying. The beacon's new location isn't all that interesting, just a hole in the ground with a cave dangerously close above and with easy access to the area where I do my deep slater mining. I've updated all the pillars, extending the wood all the way to the top. Uh, not too sure what I'm going to do with those slides here uh, and then I need to pull through the rain lines uh, The first one will end here and then the second one will bend around the corner in the second arm of the mass storage system That still needs to be updated so it looks more like this first arm In this video we will be constructing the CAFA project aka the candle factory. This is where it will go. The building will take up most space within the red markers and there along the side a road will go that will connect a new factory to the rest of the base. But let's construct a sheep farm first. A temporary one close to the building site so it can gather more while I'm doing other stuff. Oh great, it's starting to rain. Let's go to bed and hope for the best. Now where to put that sheep? Oh, uh, meet the sheep and, and, and pigs. If you recall, two of these we encountered while up that mountain recording the previous episode. And then when I went up the mountain to fetch them, I met yet another odd couple, so I brought all of them down. Now that I've got two of each, I feel a lot less bad about splitting the happy couples apart. The design of this sheep farm is by Ian XO4, which means it's extremely productive, ridiculously easy to build and only requires very few resources. If you want to build this farm yourself, I recommend you watch Ian's channel because I'm building it in slightly the wrong order. And done. Almost. The farm is ready to let the sheep in, but the sheep are not ready to go inside the farm. I need 12 adults, so I've got 6, so let's breed them again. But I'm not gonna just stand around here and wait. You two, come with me. Now grow up so you can have babies. All sheep are in position. What? Oh, okay. I see now why the tutorial said I need to use adult sheep. The farm is operational and now it also looks a bit better. It's temporary, but that doesn't mean I can't pretty it up a little. The next build is gonna take a tad longer, despite me already having gathered most, if not all, of the materials. This is where the floor is gonna go, so some terraforming will be required. I already did part of it up front, but I don't like vast flat open empty spaces in my world, not even if it's only temporary, so I kept it to a bare minimum. 
and I will continue to do so because I want this building to slot into the terrain as much as possible. I'm putting in the floor already so that I know what area definitely needs clearing out. These blocks show up red even though I've just placed them because the red dirt and the grass has spread onto them. That's okay, uh, the next layer will add another block on top uh, so the problem will fix itself eventually. How are we doing? Okay, so this part still needs to go. Uh, that corner can stay for now. That's going to be some kind of outdoor area, perhaps a garden. And then on the other end, that's a driveway. Uh, so that can also stay like that because it certainly doesn't need to be fully flat. Oh hi there little fella, but let's not get distracted because then we end up using the wrong tool. We're hitting glass again on this side, which is a good thing because that means we've almost cleared out the whole area for the building. Just need to make sure I can walk around and we should be fine. The floor and a huge portion of the terraforming are finished. The back and side still need smoothing and this drop off will also need to be fixed, uh, but not now. The design of this building is based on a real life factory in Deux. I looked on Google for 19th century factories because I wanted it to fit in with the other factory which to me looks 19th century and this photo immediately caught my attention. I only found one other picture of the building but I had a name and therefore an address so I used Google Maps to get a better idea. As it turned out, uh, Google could only show me the front same as the photos but it also offered me an aerial view. As you can see in this screenshot, the building consists of a big rectangle, the actual factory I assume, with smaller structures on the right and left, which I believe to be the uh, gatehouses that provide access to the factory's different floors. There are some other extensions to the site, which I'm going to ignore. My design is limited to the right gatehouse and the main factory part, which you see reflected in the floor I just built. Across my shoulder is the dirt path that gives access to the guest house, and that is the main factory floor. At the back, where the other gatehouse should go, I'm going to be putting in a driveway and two huge gates. The real life version has a fence, at least at the front, which I will be adding as well, but for which the terraforming still needs to be done. I'll do this later so I can follow the terrain uh, with the fence, which I think will look better. I've spent well over an hour on this already, so let's see how the sheep farm is doing. Wow, that's uh, that's really good. And the shears, uh, don't need restocking it, okay. It's been a while since I designed this build, so I don't know exactly which blocks I'll need for the first layer, but I know it's gonna be a lot, and I really mean a lot. I'm gonna build the gatehouse first because the stairs will give me easy access to the upper floors and you will get a better idea of what the final structure will look like. I'm ignoring the greenery and the glass blocks for now, saving me a whole lot of inventory space. Um, I'm figuring it should be very easy to do the windows and the plants in one go right at the end. You know what, I'm making a mess of it. Working on the wrong layer, inexplicable holes everywhere, dark corners that make baddies spawn, and parkour challenges all over the place because I don't have the blocks to close the gaps. I need to change up my approach. All shulkers need to go here, proper lighting, and then... Are you empty? Okay, come with me. You're going to be my temporary parking garage so that I can swap out my inventory more easily without messing up my other shulker boxes. From now on, I'm putting in every block for that specific layer. So scratch the idea to do the greenery right at the end, and scratch the idea to do the gatehouse first. Going layer by layer really works best. The ground floor is done. Just look at it. Doesn't it look good already? 
Unfortunately, we have to cut our gushing short because there's some forgotten prep work to catch up on. Oops, so let me get that. Uh, the new factory sits atop a massive hole on the ground that I lit up and then covered over twice. Uh, this extra floor is in here in case I want to put a farm inside the basement. So the actual hole goes a lot deeper. I've been at it for a while and I think I've pretty much perfected my approach. Each wire layer of the building requires three passes. During the first pass, I put down base building blocks such as packed mud, mud bricks, brown mushroom blocks, different planks, moss, granite, glass if there is any, basalt, that is if I don't run out or forget. During the second pass, I add any walls, a first set of greenery, and any base building blocks that I forgot or ran out of. The third pass is all about more decorative blocks such as leaves, carpets, flowers, glow lighting, and then I check with Freecam, although I certainly don't do that for every layer. I thought about using separate shulkers for the three passes, but there's a certain amount of fluidity required. Not all layers have glass blocks in them, uh, same for terracotta, plank stairs and the lot. If I tried real hard, I could potentially reduce it to two passes instead of three, but then I would need to leave behind my food and all my protective equipment, which is something I really don't want to do. Removing shop because the first floor has been done and seeing as the sheep haven't received any attention for a while I think I'll check up on them. Wow, that is so good. How about the shed? Okay, still going strong. Pass one. Pass two. We're nearing the roof so the block palette is changing. Not sure I'll need a third pass. Uh, I will because I do not have all the blocks. Oh no, where do they come from? With a Minecraft day later and the pillagers seem to have disappeared. Problem is, you never really know. Often one or two guys get left behind, at least that's my experience. Eventually this building will house villagers though, then we won't have this problem anymore. The color of the build is nothing like the original. But I did not want to use clay bricks because the old factory already uses those and deep slates. Mm, that would have been closest to the original, I guess, maybe a bit dark. But the cactus farm and the village breeder slash cornflower farm already use deep slates. So that's why I chose packed mud, mud bricks and brown mushroom blocks. I've also added a lot more greenery and flowers to my build. Maybe even a bit too much, uh, we'll see. Replacing then our first roof box for the gatehouse as well as the main building. For more light action and then we continue. Not again. Ever since I accidentally triggered a raided spawn, I must say I'm a lot more wary of these guys. They killed all my villagers at spawn, trampled my fields, and then when the raid expired, because of course I didn't win, uh, they left behind an evoker and a guy with an axe to roam the property. So I really don't like to see them around to the place. Um, as a matter of fact, if this continues, I'm going to move the villagers in early. The roof is starting to take shape. Um, I'm adding, ah, oh, look at that. From this angle, the pattern on the glass is striking. It's supposed to be leaves in case you can't tell. Anyway, as I was saying, I'm adding plants to the roof because I imagine this to be an old factory that has been around for a while. The roof is where I've deviated most from the source material, I think. Uh, instead of windows on the sides, I'm going for an entire glass middle section for the big roof. I might still add windows in future once I figure out what I'm going to do with this attic space. I see pillagers in the distance. They're the ones from earlier on, right? 
I really don't know. I've lost count of the number of police patrols that has passed by. Uh, as long as they're down there and I'm up here, I guess it's not too bad. Okay, back to some glass and what do I see? And you're stuck in the cobweb. How did you even... Ugh, my mistake, I guess. Hope you can get down on your own, because I have a roof to finish. We're on to the final stretch. A bit of glow like in here and there and everywhere, particularly on top of the roof to stop baddies from spawning. Alma stands above the big gates, a cauldron, I should add water to it at some point, and drain pipes along the wall. The outcome is a build that's in desperate need of some terraforming. The yellow blocks popping up are brown mushroom blocks whose surfaces don't quite correspond to the schematic, but that's not a problem. The fence is next, first the easy accessible parts, and then it's terraforming time. This entire front section will need to become level with the factory entrance, so that's at least four layers that I'll have to remove. I'm very sorry bees, but you're gonna have to go, but no worries, I promise I will find you a nice new spot. The sides and the back are another matter entirely. There's quite a difference between the surrounding terrain and the factory floor, so I'm gonna have to remove a lot of the terrain and then smoothen it out somehow. I want a walkable path to run along the side of the factory with an extra entrance uh, or exit at the back so that the area remains easy to traverse this part of the fence. Then double layers instead of one layer at a time should still look fairly natural. If I need steeper sides, I guess I can turn the walls into some kind of cliff surface. While there are no pillages in the air, I'll give the driveway some TLC. Never mind. You'll understand that my tools took quite a beating, but nothing a very noisy gold farm can't handle. The terraforming worked out quite seriously. That settles it. I'm moving the villagers in now, and then you guys will no longer spawn. This should be fairly simple, because I already have two fully upgraded candle workers waiting in the training center. So if I put down the boat in the right spot, I'll need five villagers, but the three other can remain novices. If you're wondering why, this is the reason. This is gonna take a lot longer than I had imagined. Because that bubble column and the one the villager went into are not connected. This is gonna be such a pain. He's finally in. And now he is where he was supposed to have been 20 minutes ago for yet another boat ride. One down, four to go. I'm replacing the shears in the top dispenser. They still have some life in them, but this dispenser is more difficult to reach, so I'm taking the tools out already. The bottom dispenser can get restocked later. As for the wool production, not bad, right? But I still need more. My two master candle makers are in, and for some reason, I have decided the other three will be bred on a location. Candyman, Candace, you still need name tags, but those are your names. Are you up to the task? Yeah? Okay. I want candle makers though, not fishermen. Get extra beds. 
and a whole lot of food. Hearts is good. More hearts. Are there always this many hearts? Ah, I hurt the baby. Well done. I'll also give you a bell and here's some more food for the next baby. Five candle makers, each with their trades locked, so I'm free to do some cleanup. Don't look at me. I know if I'd left the barrels accessible, you would have turned into a fisherman. You've got to be kidding me. I was at a sheep farm checking up on the bottom dispenser when I heard the telltale grunts. I guess I was too far away from many villagers and um, yeah, the light levels over there are quite low. So I'm hiding in the candle factory wondering what to do. These guys are really in the middle of my base so I need to do something. Do you two have any suggestions? Nah, no, didn't think so. Here we go. Oh dear, they're a lot closer than I thought. Let's run. Run, not fly, run. Where's that iron golem? Help me out, dude. Oh, look at those chickens staying back like that. Now they can't win. Ouch! Go get them, Gollum. I'm gonna have to give you a more appropriate name. That's three pillages down. Uh, I thought they were four or even five. They shouldn't split up like that. Let's hope they despawned. Better check up on the villagers. Wow, I don't know what to say. All five of them. At this point in the video, I was going to add a tour around the candle factory. But because I lost my voice for quite a while, this video is long overdue. So we'll do the tour in our next episode and I'll bid you goodbye for now. Thank you for watching and a huge shout out to Minecraft content creator Waxfruit for letting me use his music. Bye! Thank <laughs> you.